Hey, what's going on, guys? I want to talk to you about some of the top 2022 NFL draft prospects you'll see in the Cincinnati versus Indiana game at 12 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. Let's start with Cincinnati. It's quite a short list, but quite an obvious one. Quarterback Desmond Ritter, he's a senior. He's performed fairly well through the first two games, and the last week was kind of a hiccup for him. There's some people who view him as a first-round pick. There's a lot of people who view him more as being that second or third-round quarterback that's going to be taken. I think he's going to probably fall more in that range right now, but there's a chance he could work his way into the first round. I know there's still a lot of people who view him as a first-round guy. Junior running back Jerome Ford, he's an Alabama transfer. That's always a good start. You love the Alabama running backs. They always go and perform fairly well in the NFL. You know, Ford's been highly productive for them since he's gotten more carries this year. So someone to keep an eye on there. Uh, junior tight end Josh Wiley. It was really productive last year. It's not really caught fire yet this season, but someone to keep an eye on because eventually he's going to start getting more involved. And Liam Wiley, good size, not necessarily maybe the weight you would like for an NFL tight end. Uh, not necessarily, maybe not necessarily the good blocking series you would like for someone like that, but certainly a good pass catcher. And again, there are a lot of tight ends in the NFL now who are just more like wide receivers. I think Wiley could fall more in that category based on how he performs the rest of this year. Senior edge rusher Maj, uh, Majay Sanders, someone who's not really gotten rolling yet. I know people are still viewing him as a first-round pick, and I certainly still do. But he's not necessarily gotten rolling yet this season. does not have a tackle for loss, does not have a sack yet. So we'll see if he can maybe change that this weekend against Indiana. But so far, not a hot start to the year. Still viewed as a first-round pick, though. Still has a lot of high aspirations. And a lot of people view him that way. But he has to dominate against lesser competition. Because he does face a lot of lesser competition on his schedule. You can't have off games against those teams if you want to prove yourself as a first-round pick. And then, of course, another one everyone knows about at this point, junior cornerback Ahmad Sauce Gardner. One interception already this season, four tackles, no passes defensed. One of the most physical corners in the draft. He'll probably have to reel in a little bit once he gets to the NFL, but you would much rather have to reel someone in than have to put that kind of energy in them. So Ahmad Gardner, probably going to be a first-round pick right now, already has an interception this season. Really keeping an eye on him and Maja Sanders on that defense for Cincinnati. And then hopping over to Indiana, like junior quarterback Michael Penix Jr. has not been good so far this year, but someone still to keep an eye on. I don't feel him as anything more than play day three, maybe six or something on quarterback at this point, based on how bad he's been at the start of the year. That could all change. That could all turn around quite quickly. But he's never been a superstar, and he has 200 touchdowns and three interceptions so far this season. So I don't expect him to really turn everything around, but if he does, you know, could still sneak maybe into the mid-rounds. Right now, just a late day three quarterback. Senior wide receiver Ty Freifogel is also out there. Freifogel's been playing of plays over his time in Indiana, and he's probably going to be a mid-round selection, maybe a late second-round guy, perhaps at most. I don't view him as a first-round guy. He had 604 receiving yards in 2019, 721 this past year, or has 113 this year. He's a good wide receiver. I just don't think he's going to separate himself enough to beat out a lot of the guys that are being talked about as first-round prospects, especially from a physical standpoint. Senior tight end Peyton Hendershot, someone to keep an eye on, was very productive this past year, or not this past year, in 2019. Obviously, he didn't play a ton of games this past year, was less productive as well. We'll see if he's able to get his production up and kind of sneak back into the conversation as being a mid-round selection. Right now, he's not viewed as a mid-round selection. He's going to be a late draft pick. But that could change again with the big season. Senior edge rusher Ryder Anderson. Someone who had seven tackles for loss and two and a half sacks this past year. Already has three tackles for loss and a sack this season. He's an old Miss transfer. Just someone to keep an eye on. I think he's going to be a very impactful player for this uh, Indiana team right now. But I don't know if I'm making this up to the NFL level. 266 pounds. He's six foot six. Decent size, but I'm not sure about the weight necessarily holding up, depending on what scheme you want to run him in at the next level. Then, very productive linebacker, senior Micah McFadden, who's been there for a while now at this point, and he was highly productive the past two years with Indiana. He had one and a half sacks, nine tackles for loss, and 60 tackles in 2019, 59 tackles, 10 and a half tackles for loss, and six sacks in 2020, and along with two interceptions in both those years. So, he does everything across the board for them. I don't necessarily think that he's the physical specimen that will be able to go into the draft and get taken highly. He could be more of a late-round selection. We've seen tons of linebackers who are always productive in college but end up being late-round selections in the NFL draft. I think someone like Isaiah McDuffie, someone like that, who could go anywhere between the fourth round, the seventh round, or maybe even be a high-priority UDFA. But I expect Michael McFadden to be selected. I just don't know when in those late rounds. And then the secondary for Indiana is actually very talented. I don't think people recognize how good it is. 
at least on individual level right now, senior quarterback Jalen Williams, along with senior quarterback Reese Taylor, junior quarterback, the one most people know about, Taiwan Mullen, and senior safety Devon Matthews. He's recovering from an injury. I don't know if he'll play in this game, but if he is out there, that's one of the more talented secondaries, more underrated secondaries in the nation currently in terms of individual skills. Now, Taiwan Mullen's not had a very good start to the year, and that's what can impact his draft status. I know the snaps are kind of split because they have those three corners. I've listed there. The snaps are kind of split a little bit weird with those guys. But all three of them are viable NFL prospects. So we'll see how that plays out. It's going to be that secondary versus Des Desmond Ritter. I would actually expect Cincinnati to try to take advantage more of the defensive line of Indiana and try to run more with Jerome Ford and see if they can establish the run first before going to Desmond Ritter and starting to air it out a little more. But anyways, guys, that game comes on at noon today. Make sure to check out those NFL prospects. And make sure to check out all my other videos where I'm talking about more prospects who will be playing today. You can go ahead and check out my YouTube channel, and I'll also post the links on Twitter, at Sam underscore 33